Hey guys, Brandon Woolham, CCM Magazine. Today we are catching up with Mark Hall. What's up, man? What's up, my bro? How you been? Good, good. So uh, you got some busy times here as we celebrate uh, 20 years of casting crowns. One of those things that's happening is uh, happening next Thursday, November 30th, Home by Sunday, going to be in theaters. What should we expect when we get to see this documentary finally? Well, it took a while because I had some demands. I wanted either <laughs> Russell Crowe or Denzel Washington to play me. And uh, apparently they turned it down. Like, They're probably just too busy, you know. But uh, uh, so it, the, the, the whole thing is built around uh, the songs and the stories of the songs, people that, that have connected over the years, uh, kind of how we came together. Um, but the big message of the song is uh, church is a big deal. And uh, we need uh, the body of Christ. And, and so much so that we formed the crowns around our ministry in the church. So I was a youth pastor, still am. I'm sitting here in the office at the church now and uh, pouring into kids uh, in our school because we have a school here as well. And just because uh, Christian music came around, um, it wasn't something we were looking for. You know, we, we were writing songs for our kids and we had we made a CD for our kids because parents paid for us to make it. And a college kid gave it to Mark Miller of Sawyer Brown, our, our producer. And Mark's friends with Stephen Curtis Chapman. And they called me from a beach vacation. And I was hanging out with teenagers. And they're like, dude, we think these songs need to be heard. And we're going to start a label right now. And we want to sign you. So that this wasn't, this really was a God thing. You can't point back to any of it and go, we were cool, so this happened, or you know, we were awesome, so this happened. Uh, they never even heard us play live when they signed us. Isn't that crazy? That's wild. I mean, totally unconventional, and it was all based on the songs. If we are the body, voice of truth, because we're with kids and we're in the trenches and we're just talking real, and um, and so uh, that's how this all started. But I remember telling Mark in the beginning, like. If I can stay a youth pastor and do this, I'll do it. But this is what we do. And um, it's been crowded and busy and tough. And, uh, you know, I can't point to a point where it all balanced out so evenly. Uh, it's been a mess. And, and uh, But if you're going to be tired and you're going to be spent, be tired and spent doing something you're called to do, you know? And, uh, and that's what we've done. So this is the story of how that came about. The way you described that there, it sounds like a, uh, a 10 hour film. How did they, uh, fit this into a theater time frame? Well, the funny thing is you, you've got me, you got the ADD singer watching it going, cut that, cut that, cut that, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy that always assumes people are bored. So I got, I'm always keeping things going. But, um, when they originally made it, it was when they started working on it, it was a five episode uh, documentary series, like 25, 30 minutes. And so we built it around songs like Praise in the Storm. Here's the family that inspired that song in their story. And, uh, and just letting you see where songs that you know, you may know all your life where they came from. And then um, it just sort of, I don't know, man, somewhere along the lines, they said, you know what? We're gonna make this one movie. Like, okay, so it kind of <laughs> happened that way. But, um, but we kept it short. It's not a long film because I don't know. Say it and leave. Get get to the point. That's why I do it. So for folks who uh, won't be able to make it to the theaters next Thursday on November thirtieth, where are they gonna be able to watch it afterwards? Is gonna be streaming. You guys gonna release it on your yeah. platforms? It'll be streaming. Um, I'm not sure where, but castingcrowns.com will tell you where to find it. But uh, um, I, I think people are going to watch it and be encouraged and challenged to find their ministry. Um, we need the church. Um, they're all a mess. None of them are great or perfect. If you read the New Testament, every letter written to a church at some point says, why are you guys doing this? Why are you fussing? Why are you doing it? Because that, that's, that's what happens when Christians show up and meet together. But, um, but we still need it. You know, so I, I'm hoping people see that and see that you got a ministry in the church. Just a couple of weeks ago, I uh, got honored with uh, the 15th RIAA certification. How special is it to continue to get those honors after all these years when the industry has evolved so much? And apparently you just keep evolving with it. 
<laughs> it, it, when you get one of those plaques, it, it, uh, it just reminds me when I see songs, I remember where I was when I was writing them. And usually I was alone in the car going through something. And, um, I know that those stories are meeting somebody in the car or when they're alone. And because that's the stories that people stop and tell me. And, uh, just, um, that's a big deal. That's a really big deal. If you're going to do something, uh, it needs to be eternal. It needs to have some purpose. And, uh, so it, it's pretty humbling. One of the other things that uh, you guys have done as you celebrate this year, uh, the, the album life songs, a celebration of the first 20 years features a yeah. lot of collaborative versions of these classic, uh, crown songs. How did you pick who you wanted to join you on, on this project? Dude, we just started texting and uh, I started just texting guys and hey man, you know, we're we're celebrating like Mac Powell. Like, hey, we're celebrating. And uh if you've got a favorite crown song that you could put your thing on, man, I would love to have it. Cause these guys are all heroes of mine. And uh and Mac didn't even hesitate. He's like, whole oh, world hears. That's one. I like that one. And uh so Zach Williams, um, he he didn't hesitate either. He's like broken together. That's my song. That's the one that that I needed to hear when my when my marriage was going through some tough stuff, you know. And so these are these are people that these songs meant something to. Um, even Brian Littrell, you know, he's yeah. he lives here in Atlanta. We've got a Backstreet Boy man. <laughs> um, uh, he loved the song "Hands of the Potter" and uh, just loved how it talks about God being in control. So so all these songs were kind of handpicked by the people that sang them. Did it get competitive? Were there people that wanted to sing the same song that you had to like decide who was going to get that one? Oh, um, oh, I'm sure. Like, like if, if they hesitated, you know, they're like, oh, I want to do who am I? Well, somebody's already doing who am I, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I, I think, I think in the end it worked out good. For people that haven't listened to the album yet, which one of those collaborations do you think is going to shock people the most? Which one is going to surprise them a little bit? Oh, let's see. Um, I think. Matthew doing only Jesus is good. Kane doing nobody uh, is is really nice. Steven singing Voice of Truth because we wrote that together uh, is is really good. Um, uh, Torin singing Life Song, doing it in total Torin Wells style. It's like when you first hear it, I'm like, what song is this? And uh, and then he starts singing it. Uh, so th- th- I, I I really like hearing other people doing their doing their thing to it. And then uh, Crowns we went in. And took some old songs that were kind of our favorites and uh, changed them up. There's about four or five songs that are what we would call the deep cuts in the early records that uh, we got to record again, put on there as well. So I, I think people will love it. 20 years in now, when we go another 10 years, 20 years down the road. What's that legacy you want Casting Crowns to have? When people hear that name, they look back on this career. What do you hope they're still saying about the band even after you're gone? Man, I don't know if it's just because I'm old, but uh, I I was walking I was walking through Walmart and a guy stopped me and he's like, "You're you're the cast crowns guy." And he goes, "Man," and he called me cast crowns. You're casting crowns, right? <laughs> and uh, and he said, "Man, this one song you did, dude, it just caught me right at the right time." Um, he said it was a uh, oh gosh, what was it? It's like, you can't remember the song. And he's like, it's about God, you know, and how he, he loves us. And I'm like, uh, it's a lot of them, you know, <laughs> I said, who am I? He goes, no, no, no. no. And I'm like, oh, great, cool. And that's all, I started trying to help him guess the song and he never remembers it. And, uh, and, and then he finally says, man, all I know is that I was driving uh, to a job that I was working and that song came on and it, I realized that I'd just been playing around with religion and I didn't really know who Jesus was. And uh, he said that, that song, um, I feel like it was probably East to West, but from what he was saying, um, but he, he said, it just met me. And, and that's where I got things right with God and, and things have changed, you know, and he walks off, never knew the song. And to me, that's the point, you know, um, you know, Michael W. Smith had 
the uh, his 30 year, I believe, anniversary like several years back. And he did like this big concert in Nashville. Yeah. All these artists came and sang one of his songs. Um, man, I had the song I wanted because uh, so speaking of the com- the competitive thing, uh, man, I'll lead you home. That was my record. That that song, that whole album was my coming back to Jesus record because it was so raw. Man, he was just saying stuff like I feel dead. I feel numb. Like like nobody was talking like that. And uh, and so I knew the one I wanted to do. And uh, I, I said to Mike, I said, hey, this is the song I want. And he's like, oh, that one's already taken. Like, no, you know, it's like, who's doing it? Let me call it. Let me ask if I can do it, right? And uh, so that that thing that you talked about happened. And so I went back to that record and I started looking through songs and I played one that I forgot even existed. I forgot this was even a song. But when that song started playing, man, I started tearing up because I remembered riding on a 10 speed, uh, listening to that song and God really drawing me back to him. And I forgot I even knew that song. To me, that is the goal. To be remembered as a musician and an artist is fine, but that just doesn't do anything for people. People are hurting. People are are skeptical. People have been burned. People are, are, you know, they wanted God to show up a certain way and he didn't show up that way. And they think he just didn't show up. There's so many things happening in people remembering who casting crowns is, man, I don't need that to be my goal. So I, I, I'm really hoping that people just, they had their Jesus moment with us, you know? And uh, um, yeah. I, and I don't mean that to sound like all Jesus churchy humble because it's not. I just get it. I get it. I, I, we're not the point. You know, people thinking we're awesome does nothing for them. You know, being a fan of somebody does nothing. But if something I sing gets you to read scripture more and, and you start connecting with God, that's the deal, man. That's what we're doing. There's so many artists that are out there right now that are trying to juggle the, the working in the church and touring. You guys mm-hmm. obviously been doing it for years and years what advice do you give those artists that are trying to uh to figure that out right now yes yeah, it's, it's hard <laughs> if we ever figure it out we'll let you know <laughs> it, it, it's tough when you're sharing the gospel singing christian music you don't get phone calls to do bad things it's all great it, it's all stuff that that you know the gospel will be shared there the problem is you got church here you know and, and so I don't want to make some, this is the way you should do it, but you do need to pray for wisdom because learning to say no is really tough. You start thinking, if I don't go to this thing, um, you know, my career is not going to make it or, or something like that. And just if God, God knew what he was doing when he called you and his church is important and we need to be pouring into that church to replace ourselves. There ought to be, three or four people learning how to do what I do and knowing how to lead worship. Um, I, I can't do that. I just pop it in and out. So, so I've got to pray for wisdom to how not just to show up as much as I can, but how to bring on a Timothy, somebody that I can pour into and, and, and give this ministry to uh, that way when I'm not there, it doesn't need me, you know? So the church is a big deal. Figure out, Ask God for wisdom on how to stay in it. Yeah, well, we're 20 years in. Hopefully we get more, way more than 20 years. Uh, the movie, the documentary, you can see it Thursday, November 30th in uh, theaters all over the nation. And then if you miss it there, streaming somewhere. We'll tell you where when we find out. Uh, the album's already out there if you want to listen to that. Good hanging with you today, Mark. Great conversation. Man, you too, bro. Thanks for having me on, Brandon. No problem.